Welcome back to Android Q&A. My name is Jason. This is where we try and answer your most pressing Android questions. Like, why is it that the Google Experience Launcher is exclusive to Nexus and Google Play Edition devices? And why is it that I can't talk and surf on my phone at the same time? And Jace, did you know that Broda means beard in Polish? Tak wiem. Zaczynajmy. All right, let's start off with some Google Experience Launcher NV. Hey Jace, quick question buddy, do you have any idea why the Google Now Experience Launcher is exclusive to the Nexus and Google Play Edition phones? Also, will it be released to more Android devices? Yes, that is a good question, Brian, and we don't really know for sure. I asked other Android Authority staff what they thought about it, and most of them feel that this is really about Google marking its territory, which could be true. I would also add to that that Google can't force uh, manufacturers to use stock Android, but Google can make Android so compelling and so appealing that they force Android users to demand from their manufacturers that they bring us at least somewhat closer to using vanilla Android. But Brian, if you're willing to wield some geekery magic, you don't have to wait. You can follow the links below for instructions on how to sideload the Google Experience Launcher yourself. Marlon Cruikshank had a question regarding using voice and data at the same time. Jace, why can't you talk on the phone and browse the internet at the same time while using a Nexus 5? Thanks for the question, Marlon. It's a good one. I know many other people have suffered from the issue. If you remember a number of years ago when AT&T first acquired the iPhone, AT&T put out a commercial with a bumbling idiot husband who forgot his wife's anniversary, oh my god, the cliche, and the fact that the AT&T phone could do voice and data at the same time allowed him to book uh, a wedding anniversary event without his wife knowing that he forgot it. But it is generally considered to be a CDMA issue, right? So with carriers like Verizon and Sprint, it's especially an issue, but though not all. I found some forums where users uh, on Verizon said that they didn't have this issue. It's also considered to be a tri-band issue, which concerns me because the Nexus 5 is dual band. So you should uh, check with your carrier and see if there's a way that you can sort that out. If not, you might want to consider changing carriers when your contract is ended. Good luck, Marlon. Next question helps out all you travel bugs who want to take advantage of Google's location services. Hey Jace, how do I tell Google that I'm now living in a different country? Well Samuel, it will only take a minute. Follow these instructions and you should be fine. Go to the Google homepage. On the bottom right hand side, select settings. In that pop-up, click on search settings, then select location, where you can fill in your location and benefit from Google's location services like Google Now. Now Neil brought us a new battery question that I haven't read before. Hey Jace, does using a two amp or higher charger have a negative impact on your phone's battery? My Nexus 5 gets quite warm when plugged into a Samsung Galaxy tablet charger. So Neil, first warning, if your phone is getting warm from using a different charger, don't use that charger. Use the proprietary charger if you can and you avoid warranty issues, you don't wanna do that. Now, you should know that each phone has a chip that controls how much power it can draw. So in theory, if you're using a two amp uh, charger, the phone can only draw one amp or whatever specifications that particular phone has. So generally speaking, not a good idea. Thanks for watching Android Army. My name is Jace. I'd love to connect with you here on Google Plus or Twitter. I read all my comments at replies and tags, but the question of the week to win the Android Authority t-shirt is the following. Android Wear was announced just earlier this week. What will Google or Samsung or any of the manufacturers have to do to create a usable experience or a user experience with wearable technology that will win? Are we gonna go all Michael Knight and uh, control our phones through voice notifications? How's it gonna be? Clearly Google Glass, Google Glass was too creepy and too geeky to be successful at scale. What will they have to do to create wearable technology that is successful at scale? Love to hear your comments or questions. Put them in the comments below. The best question or comment will win the t-shirt. I'll ship it anywhere in the world. Talk to you soon, guys. Don't forget about my brothers in Android, Josh, Joe, and the Tech Ninja, Kevin. I shall see you next week on Android Q&A and Sunday for Android Weekly.